Damien, I have not sung. I'm lazy as hell. I'm telling you, it's awful. <laughs> okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I got the go signal. This is I Dodge Live. I'm Thomas Hampson. It's Thursday, so I must have some guest with me. And do I ever have guests with me tonight? Now, this is I Dodge Live, where classical music happens. And sometimes it happens with one, two, three, five, and even six, a whole bunch of people. It's really my pleasure, my honor to speak with a bunch of wonderful singers, colleagues, you know them as the King Singers, but we're going to get to know them as human beings as well this evening. Enjoy some of their music and just take a peek behind the scenes and what it's like to be a King Singers. Welcome, gentlemen, to Idajo Live. Thank you for doing this. Hello. Thanks, thanks, for having us. thanks for having us. I've never had so many people to talk to. This is great. I'll, I'll say one question and then 10 minutes later, I'll come back in. <laughs> now, you, you, you guys are all in Oxford, London right now? And Correct. you've been rehearsing because you're recording, you're going on tour, you're just re rehearsing because you're diligent young men. What, what are you doing? Well, both of those things. But um, excitingly for us, on Saturday, we have our first concert in person in front of an audience um, in Germany um, since March the 7th, which um, exactly. in, in our group's 52-year history is by far the longest we've spent without doing a concert. Um, so it's an exciting time for us all. It is very exciting. Do you think it's worth it, everybody, to go around the circle and, and say your names just for the for the heck of it? Well, Nick, you're Nick, right? I'm Nick, exactly, yes. Right? I'm, Nick, I'm second baritone. And I'm right. Eddie, the second countertenor. Second countertenor, and? Yeah. I'm, I'm Chris, I'm the first baritone. Right. Uh, I'm Johnny. And oh, let me guess, are you, are you the first tenor? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm Johnny. I'm, 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 go I'm going to be the bass for today, yeah. Um, All right. Matt, and I'm the first counter tenor. Fantastic. And I'm the tenor. All right. Well, wonderful, wonderful to meet you guys. I mean, I'm, I have to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, this is new for me as well. I was, I'm going to confess this. I, I know recordings. We all know recordings. I mean, Christmas without the King Singers is not possible. Uh, mm -hmm. Your American album a couple of years ago, you know, it, and I was so. I, I was actually thinking it was going to be a little bit more, maybe of the of the serious. Not. Well, I'm, what am I trying to? I'm trying to find the right adjective more more the classic song repertoire and to my utter delight being a Cole Porter fiend uh, I think about a full third of the album is Cole Porter and my goodness what a, what wonderful arrangements I mean by the way what, that's maybe that's my first question I mean we all know your sound we love your sound we, we love you we're so glad you're back on on it but who does all of these arrangements how do you how do you take a normal song meaning you know a solo song and turn it into this amazing six-part harmony well, we're very lucky um, to have a wide array of arrangers uh, at our, I was about to say beck and call, but it's not quite like we've got them on a leash, but we, um, we even within the group, Pat, Nick and I uh, are, are really interested in doing some of the arrangements, but when it comes to some of these bigger projects, we're happy to go to someone who's, uh, whose day job is arranging. And um, the the album that you referenced was um, was all done by Alexander Lestrange, who is a terrific arranger, but in particular for the jazz rep. But right. you know, from the from the early days of the King Singers, there was a this sort of steady bank of professional arrangers and composers who worked with the with the group, um, particularly when they were on TV on a on a on a fairly uh, regular basis in the seventies and eighties. And you had these guys who were just so clever uh, at, at writing and tuning out arrangements on a weekly basis. And um, yeah, we are very fortunate to have this awesome uh, library, uh, you know, with with more than oh, probably around about two and a half, three thousand songs in it. And uh, there's a there's a fair amount of arrangements in there. And I, you know, I within well each, imagine. yeah, and within each King Singers lineup over the years, there's always been an in-house. Um, a ranger or two or three um, and I think one of the benefits of singing with the ensemble is you have a, a, a unique perspective of what the people around you uh, do well and and so you can tailor arrangements to suit your colleagues at that given time um, which is a lot of fun and Fantastic. some of the so we had, uh, Bob Chilcott was a tenor in our group for a long time and and ah, right. many of his, uh, Bob Chilcott yeah many of his arrangements have, have gone on to become absolute staples of the a cappella choral world and every choir we come along to and um, wherever we are in the world we'll meet choirs in 
Singapore or anywhere in America and everywhere in between. And they'll say, oh, I love singing this King Singers arrangement or this Bob Chilcott song or, you know. So it's, it's amazing to be part of that, part of that living heritage. Is your, now, I mean, you, you guys have referenced, and we should make a point of this. I mean, you've been at this, this King Singers has existed as a group since 1968. Yeah. yeah. Your 50, if I remember, your 50, your 50 year celebration was, was 2018, and that was the gold album. Is that right? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Gee, what, what a clever name. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, so you, like you say, you must have a vast library. Is this library rentable? Can somebody say, I've got a concert and I some rangers, can they apply to you and, and rent your material? Um, Go on, Eddie. I was going to say, and um, so lots of our arrangements, we're really lucky to work with Hal Leonard. And right. so a lot of our arrangements have been um, adapted for um, SATV choirs with Hal Leonard. So yeah. people can get lots of stuff on there. And we do get a lot of the time people asking for stuff that we do because they really, really love our arrangements. Um, so I would direct them to that sort of place. But we also um, often, when we're touring the world, we do um, joint pieces, repertoire with them. And so people often then get to sing the actual King Singer copies um, when we sing with them, which is absolutely awesome. Well, um, but but I, I would say most of our library is probably for only our use. Um, but there are elements that you can get through through Hal Leonard, which is great. And when you're programming, I mean, you, you sing like 125 concerts a season. Is that right? Normally. <laughs> yeah, normally, exactly. I mean, identify completely. I had my first recital in July 7 since February 23 uh, in, in Zurich. So I, I know it's, and, and, and by the way, it's, it's going to be a great rush for you guys because it's, you can, you can just feel not only you, we as singers, you know, and as, as artists, performers, musicians, you know, our lifeblood is, is there again, but you can, you can just feel in the audience, everybody getting, their their musical fix again and and of course your audiences love you and follow you and your people know exactly why they're coming to see you and it's just going to be oh my god they're back i'm with you again you, you can just and, and and not a cough not a sound i mean i've only had three concerts in the last six months there are four concerts i guess a couple of regional things but then it's not just it's you're gonna you're going you're gonna love it and I'm, I'm glad you can get to germany we in here in austria we're having a bit of a of a covid scare numbers are going up a little bit so everybody's settling back we were just getting into some routines and and here comes covid again i he's a very nasty virus and um we all need to pay a whole bunch of attention to get rid of this damn thing but never mind now one of the reasons we're talking is not is this concert you're doing in germany the one that's going to be the global the global concert hall no uh, that so today actually we've announced and put on sale four concerts with the global concert hall um so this, there's four concerts this season right that's right we've made a mini season just in the global concert hall um which is now on sale and there's two concerts in october one in november and a christmas one in december all different themes, brand new programs. And so we're going to be traipsing around the UK um, to film these over the coming few months. And so that's part of what, what we're rehearsing today was for Saturday's concert in Germany and then for these four coming up on the Global Concert Hall. But yeah, this is, a, this is the perfect day to be talking to you, Thomas, as they went on sale a few hours ago. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that there's some planning in this, but not so specifically. This is this is not a, this is not an interview to sell tickets. But hey, if you want to buy a ticket after the interview, go ahead. Uh, I I mean, just the idea of having you guys on my big screen here in my music room uh, for Christmas is is already makes me smile. Huh, it's fantastic. So, how much how, when you're programming and you've got all these concerts, does, does somebody, is somebody, one of you, or all, all of you, when you become a king singer, and I want to talk about that a little bit, but let's stay, stay in the repertoire question. Do you do you have a database that says how often this has been sung or where it's been sung? And I mean, do you dip into your history and say, oh, heck, we haven't sung that for 10 years. Why don't we do that? Or, or somebody comes into the group and say, oh, I remember I first heard the King Singer. They sang that. And that was, you know, is that kind of the li lively process? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, very much so. So I've been in the group for 10 years now. I'm the current longest serving member. And so I had five colleagues before these guys and then these five. And okay. what's interesting is that the kind of the, the preferences of my former colleagues very much dictated what we sang when I joined. And then one right. by one, they've changed. And so our newest come in, preferences for certain pieces have kind of, 
been left aside and other people other pieces have come into the spotlight and so we're now we're now in a group which is i think i mean a much younger group as well in terms of age as well as tenure um and so there is right. a preference for a different kind of music now interestingly that doesn't mean that um there's any less of a desire to sing music from the renaissance or i mean we've got some of the most beardy musicians in the world ever and there are young <laughs> um, oh yeah sorry be touching him but um <laughs> um it is interesting yeah as you as you see the shift in membership you naturally see a change in repertoire and because there are over three thousand pieces in our library it's very easy to rotate through an enormous amount and still not have to get you know like have to rotate back to the same music that you sang 10 years ago um, right right but now do you guys have uh, this is a really i'm asking this question more as a devil's advocate but I, anyway do you have day jobs or is this what you do this is it this is it i mean part of me hoped we might have had day jobs for the last six well, months what i mean by that is are you teaching are you working someplace else but i don't think your your employment is this group and taking care of this group that's correct mm -hmm. so my next question i'm sure everybody's just really curious to hear this how do you become a king singer and when do you quit being a king singer the old cradle to grave question <laughs> please um, it's a great question uh uh basically we've all had roughly this kind of same background we've grown up in the english choral tradition so singing in boy choirs um, or indeed mixed choirs um from the age of maybe eight or so um and daily mm -hmm. services where we're singing new repertoire on a daily basis performing it to a congregation as part of that worship so um doing that between the age of sort of eight and 18 and then becoming a student we've sort of by that point sung thousands of pieces of repertoire uh, we've learned how to sight read we've um sort of trained our kind of oral skills all this kind of thing and the king singers when there's a vacancy in the group so someone decides to to move on to something else perhaps to uh, become more of a family person or else to sort of, you know, do something else in their career. Um, we then look to uh, audition people for that voice part. Um, we ask around amongst some of the, the choirs, you know, perhaps some of the, the leading choirs in the UK um, and sort of choral singer friends, directors of music and see if they have any recommendations for the very particular kind of singing we're looking for on the skill set, um, as well as, of course, being... Um, sociable, fun, easygoing, uh, and conscientious, um, sort of business-minded perhaps even. Um, and then we set some auditions, we hold some auditions and um, get the person to sing with, uh, with the lineup. And then normally the, uh, the kind of, the, the person who we'd like to appoint becomes fairly clear after a couple of rounds or so. Um, so yeah, that's basically how, how we would um, invite someone to become a King Singer. So is, there a is there a trial period? You know, some public performances and, you know, ha, it's, it's more of the work. And is anybody, is anybody of you new to the group now or has this group been together for a couple of years or how long? Two oh, years, yes. Yeah. So, so Eddie and I are the newest to join. That's why we're out in the garden. We're the, uh, you, you're not allowed to the be rookies. in the house. <laughs> yeah, we're, the, we're not allowed in the clubhouse. So we're the rookies. Um, Actually, we, you're on your way to get beer and pizza. I get it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're making me hungry now. No, we, so we joined at the beginning of last year, yeah. uh, beginning of 2019, just after their oh. big 50, 50th anniversary year. Um, and then we had an absolute whistle-stop year last year, running around the world, and then um, that came abruptly to a halt yeah. March. I think we've done um, as much time in the group with COVID as we have um, without COVID. <laughs> So um, not quite, but almost. When, when, when you were really under tight lockdown uh, in, the, in the spring, we were all under lockdown. And were you able to get together a little bit and just keep the pipes no. going? Or are you really, we, you guys were on sabbatical as well? We, we, we did fill the time extremely well. So we, we have um, a charity that we, that is called the King Singers Global Foundation, which is both based in the US and the UK. And we um, did various charitable collaborations with some of our Finding Harmony ambassadors. So we're in a, in a project at the moment called Finding Harmony, which is all about the power of music to bring people together in difficult times. And we really, really wanted to not just record an album of interesting music from various periods like the Renaissance or Apartheid in South Africa or the civil rights movement in America. But we really wanted to kind of 
do some finding harmony now. And so we paired with three charitable organizations and over the course of um, the lockdown, whilst also recording some videos from home that we released that are now actually released on an album, we also did some sort of virtual collaborations and teaching with, with our Finding Harmony ambassadors, which was, I think, for all of us, extremely rewarding, um, hopefully for them as well. Um, and we really, really enjoyed that. Um, well, tell me about this. Is the, is the Finding Ambassadors thing, is that, is that what I saw on, on Instagram, this phenomenal, amazing grace yep. project you did? Is that, that, is that part of that? Exactly. Should we try? I think, ladies and gentlemen, you've got to see. You've got to see this. I have some other. I've geared up. I'm going to do a screen sharing here, um, and I hope I get it. I hope I get it right. Let me click all my correct buttons here. Yeah, I have it right here. Let's. This should be the next thing you see. Should be my web browser with the Instagram. Is that correct? Oh yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this is this is the King Singers in their. What do you call it? It's a Finding Harmony. What? So this was um, a collaboration. Finding with a Harmony Project, yes. Yeah, it's called Soundabout, and the charity um, helps people with profound learning disabilities um, sort of engage with music um, and help them. And it was a piece written by um, Steve Donerkey, who's Pat's father, who's a music therapist. Um, and he recorded um, one of the soloists, who, who you'll hear in a second, is a wonderful at singing this piece. And he recorded himself singing it and then Pat's dad created an arrangement for us around that so it was very much live and tailored to them and then we sent it to all of them and they recorded whatever they wanted to over the top however they could contribute whether it was singing or sort of using instruments and things and it was enormously powerful so yeah this is with sound about this is on Instagram anybody can find this uh, King Singers but I think we should just we won't listen to all of it, but we'll listen to a good chunk of it. I also to see it, it's unbelievably moving and beautiful. Can you all see it? Yeah. Okay. And hear it? Well. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. that is just so unbelievably beautiful i mean thank it's you just, thank it's beautiful to you. <laughs> i just choked up uh -huh. i mean i can't I, I'm, I'm, I'm in high school we used to i was in a church high school in america and, and on saturdays it was the seventh adventist and saturdays we'd go into the children's hospitals different and one of them was a a severely handicapped or, or challenged um children's hospital and it was amazing to see you know the response and and I, I never was around kids that could have actually participated like these but 
but you know it was like that remarkable movie with robin williams um and robert de niro where where music just clearly enlivened another part of the brain and it's such a synapse connector so many parts of the brain do you i mean it's just you know it's 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 a wonderful humanitarian project bless you all for doing that it's absolutely fantastic when when you do when you work you, you do an awful lot of teaching as well right i mean you do master classes and obviously you're helping groups become better groups but but are you finding all sorts of personal and singing and musical levels and education and that, that you're exploring? It's kind of a stupid question, but somebody just um, pull the string, somebody talk. <laughs> um, yeah, well, one of the exciting things about um, being in lockdown is the fact that it's really easy to connect with the entire world from the comfort of your own home. And so uh, we are trying to explore more and more opportunities to to teach more and more groups online because we know that for many groups their once a week perhaps um zoom you know rehearsals are a real opportunity to keep their own communities going right. and so uh, the chance for us to sort of drop in on on a on a weekly thing and just give them a bit of uh, encouragement and 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 share some positivity and some ideas um to to help them uh, even though they're singing on mute for most of the session um it's just 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 something to keep them saying you know just to keep them thinking look this isn't forever but um this is something that we have to cope with for now and here are some things to think about and so um we're we're doing all sorts of things and uh the, the next project that we have coming up on the 26th i believe is um the first of a series of three workshops with the san francisco girls chorus oh, and you. uh and so we're, we're really looking forward to that. And that gives us a chance across three workshops to really um, get into the nitty gritty of what it means to be a performer. And so, right. yeah, that's, that's, that's very exciting. Um, but yeah, Johnny. Well, I, yeah, please, yeah, go. I, I was gonna um, say just one thing about us, and I was gonna ask you a question, if that's all right, Thomas, which is, but, but the first thing about- oh, No, 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 this is a one way <laughs> thing. I'm not in- no, no, that's not fair. Um, I think that normally we we teach I mean we, we often teach by example so we'll say why don't you try this and we'll do it and then people say oh I see what you're doing there I, I didn't I didn't understand it at first but now that it's been performed by a group of six people I, I get what you were getting at um, and obviously we can't do that there's no technology yet that's widely available that allows us to sing as an ensemble remotely so we, we can't if we sing right now we tried to sing right now as a six and three screens no. awful time like it wouldn't work correct but we, we've had to work out how can we how can we teach in a way that still gives everything that we can give but takes out that element of teaching and that there is a huge amount you can do and what's really interesting for instance is that you know these things are really up close and personal with the face it's like having film acting or tv acting teaching mm -hmm. rather than acting teaching so you can be like hey what is your face saying what are you doing but it's a different kind of teaching and i think it's it's given us um some insight into like you know how different platforms require different skills and can therefore kind of um necessitate a different training and therefore new opportunities for us and i wanted to ask you have you because you do so many master classes yourself have you been teaching over the last six months and if so how has it affected you well, that, okay. Um, it, along the same along the same lines, you, you, there there is technology that makes uh, music on the web possible, but it's rather sophisticated, and you need probably. I mean, I'm talking about really sophisticated um, software developed by Polycom. I have just heard that there is a music performance mode uh, being developed by Zoom, which I think is exciting. Um, and I'm sure that that's down the pike. Um, I, I, one of the reasons I was at Manhattan or am at Manhattan School of Music as a, as a visiting professor of voice and digital technology, technologies is in the, was in the development. Uh, Christian Orto, who is, who is our prophet in this kind of world, unfortunately lost her fight with cancer last, last June, um, left, left a great legacy of online teaching. And, and I guess the, the, the two points, given, given the ubiquitous Zoom, Skype, FaceTime, Hangouts, whatever that is, I, I don't feel comfortable teaching voice or teaching music on that platform. Um, 
I have been, I do have two classes in, in, in Berlin at the Boulez, uh, uh, Boulez um, Auditorium at the Berenboim Said Academy. I teach a, Sch a Schubert, a Schubert um, week and those young stingers are also part of the Heidelberg Lead Academy that I run. And so I have them all year long and we spent some serious time. I just threw it out and I said, you guys want to get together and at least talk through some stuff. And it was amazing how important it was for all of us. We, we bonded and we spent every week going through other stuff. Nobody sang, but my goodness, did we have a lot to talk about repertoire and how am I progressing? And, and I can't believe I've been taken. I have, even as a student, I have no performance. I have no way of measuring myself. I have no way of, of being who I am. And that was a pretty amazing um, a learning curve for me as well this spring. And I, I really adore these young people. And some of them have, you know, I've, I've had wonderful opportunities to work with some wonderful young singers that are really making their way. And, and I think that that's, that's very good for the community. What I did with them is I said, well, let's try something. Record an MP4, record for me your of a performance or, or, or best would be a rehearsal. Just let the camera run, trim it so there's no, you know, walking it, whatever. And, and let's do this. Let's do share, screen sharing and see what that's like for all of us. And that wasn't too bad. And you could, especially since, since I already knew them. And that's what I was going to say to you. If you know these groups and you're just keeping track of them, then of course, you have an immediate immediate jump on the believability factor, on the communication factor, technical factors. There's just there's just at some point you need to be in the same airspace, and and we all know that. But uh, and I and I think that's the I think that's one of the challenges for conservatory online education, higher education. I mean, you know, quite frankly, Cambridge was one of the first colleges to come out or universities to come out last spring and say there will be no in-person teaching for the next at least eight months. Uh, and that was a huge shot across the bow. Everybody knew that we were going to to be higher education, totally digital um, in, a, in a very big way. Music schools, I think, have a particular challenge. Uh, and uh, both, both physically what they're trying to control the proximity, as we talked about a little bit, but also, but also, you know, there's only so much you can do online, especially in the sensitive frequencies of flutes and voices and strings. Um, so it's a it's a dynamic we're all working on. Um, I'm, I'm totally in, in exactly where you are. I, the, I think the contact's important. Whatever you can share together is important. Um, and and maybe there's just another level by doing a film and working on it together. But actually singing at a at a computer screen f f for one another is it, probably amusing at best and 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 really not very pleasant. <laughs> Does that answer your question? Oh, please. I mean, we were just because we were rehearsing earlier today. We were we were also thinking about performing and and um, obviously when we're doing these online concerts, we have no audience. And I think there's a not only in teaching is there this challenge of. Uh, you know, you're going to find that a little weird. I that I've done a couple of those concerts. I mean, I did I did an I did an online televised Norwegian television outside gala summer concert with with uh, with Klaus Mekele and the Oslo Philharmonic, and it was so exciting to be able to do that. It was wonderful to be with them, and I love the orchestra. But and we were literally on a on a harbor, and it was you know just the atmosphere is fantastic, and we're all dressed up to the nines. We got cameras going around. The only problem was there about seven people. <laughs> staff was out there so you'd have these great moments of you know bravura from the orchestra and then sort of yes <laughs> uh, on television it was a hundred dollar bill it was fantastic everybody loved it and i'm sure it was a great thing but it is a little weird for us as as performers even though you know i i don't know about you guys but i don't think we go out and hustle our audience but but you get that energy from from the from the hall i mean when we're singing we're singing what we're you know, we're the doorway to something else for everybody else's imagination is, is how I feel about it. But are they listening? <laughs> you know, So you'll find it a little bit weird, but you guys, you'll be, a, it's a little bit like a recording studio, I must say, and you've recorded so much, you, it, you'll, have, you'll have fun with it. Just know that on the other side of that green dot are a whole bunch of incredibly grateful people. Yeah, well, we did one of those concerts, actually, we did one, Idagio Global Concert Hall um, right. 
months ago. And that was our first experience like yours. And the funny thing for us is that we do quite a lot of music, which is inherently comic. And the way we do it is you know, these little bits of comedy and these looks and little jokes. Ah, ha, ha. <laughs> Silence is a deafening after yeah. you've wheeled was out. It, was it like telling a bad joke? I mean, you know. <laughs> no idea knowing quite how bad it is, because normally the stony silence gives you... <laughs> that, that had to be fabulous. I could just imagine. You know, oh my God, it's like it's like landing landing a tubber, fantastic. Um, so uh, let's go into the. I want to take everybody into the Idanjo app, if I can find it. And that's here. I'm, and now that's all my other stuff. Oh my goodness, where did I put it? Safari. Idanjo. Here we go. Here we go. I'm in the, I, ladies and gentlemen, I love doing this in every, I, every show I try and show a little bit about how the Adagio app and the Adagio browser work. Um, this is the app, which is on your Mac, your Android, your computer, your telephone, your iPad, and whatever you do on any one of those devices just reflects on every other device. So if you make a playlist on your computer, it's gonna be the playlist on your telephone when you wanna go, especially when you're a, and you can take it with you and you can download it if you're a, a, a member of Idaju, which I would recommend. It's incredibly uh, budget handy. And to have, you know, Idaju is is all about classical music, thousands and thousands of hours of music, literally over 17, 18, 19,000 different composers. I'm a professional. I had no idea that there were that many people writing, writing <laughs> classical music, but it's an incredible database and cross-referenced. It's a lot of fun to get lost in. I just put in King Singers. And, and by the way, to, to me, I, I put in, look at that. I put in King Singers. I pulled up the King's Singers. You guys had a name. Hey, I'm going to go, I'm going to go back out here. I'm going to talk for a minute. You had a, you had a name thing for a while. What was that all about? It was King singers and kings singers. I mean, did somebody decide it didn't sound right or what? There was, I think, there was a um, the group in the nineties went to a management consultant branding company and said <laughs> to rejuvenate this brand. And I think there was a feeling that there were too many S's and the apostrophe was off putting. <laughs> I think they just um, decluttered the name. Um, and that was that did stick for a while, um, but I don't know at what point it went back. But we're now it back just, to just the three words as they are. It looked so it, bad. It, 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 it <laughs> King apostrophe singers. It, 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 <laughs> no, did that. you get did did you get feedback that that when you went to King singers versus Kings singers that people thought it was a different group? I don't know if that's the case, but I think people found that actually probably more confusing to do it with lowercase k, only one s. I think it didn't actually streamline as much as maybe people thought. So we've reverted. The only disadvantage is that in Japan now, um, they have trouble writing our name because in Japanese, it's either Kings Shingazu or Kings Shingazu. So that uh -huh. we all a bit of feedback there. <laughs> is, I say. Is, is, is the possessive difficult in the Japanese language? No, uh, it's not that. It's a, it's basically a Japanization of the English, uh, the vocalized S versus the unvocalized S, uh, which is a little bit fiddly. Oh, yeah, of course. King's singers. Oh, that is a bit tricky, isn't it? Yeah, think about it. I just smeared all the guys. King's singers. singers. <laughs> right. so here we go back we'll go, let's go back to the share let's go let's go back into the uh where am i here no that's not it why can't i just easily find that here we go all right sorry so here we are we're back in the king's singers now i mean ladies and gentlemen look at this i mean this is your list of composers show all 410 composers not right now thank you very much mm -hmm. uh you can have all sorts of fun looking at this and you can scroll down here in the different partners and all that kind of stuff but you can see they've made over the years the king's singers not these six gentlemen but but they're the whole group um what's your latest album is the latest album is in isolation it is that, yeah. That so that is a sort of diary piece of what we made. And is that what we're, are we going to hear cuts from this on the on the program? Um, on the global concert hall one. Yeah, we might hear a few of these. So these are basically some of our favourite close harmony arrangements of pop songs or folk songs, which we just decided week by week we fancied recording. Um, now, but, what, what is the Ochinash? From what, what country is this? That is um, by Nikolai Kedrov, um, who was a Russian. 
He lived and worked in St. Petersburg before moving to Berlin and then on to Paris in the early 1900s. And it's absolutely beautiful track. Um, am I going on to that? Which one can we listen to? Let's listen to one of these. Okay. Um, Give me one to listen to. Should we listen to that, the Kedrov? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Or Down in the River to Pray? Let's do the Kedrov. All right, here we go. So here, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, if you push the ellipse, you'll see save to collection or save add to playlist. So if I were to do that, I add to playlist, I'd go over here and I have all sorts of playlists here, but I would want to create a new playlist and I would want to call that the King's Singers, right? And then if I do that, create playlist, boom, I've got that and that's got in there. So if I go to my playlists and I connect with my King's Singers, there's that piece right there. And that's going to follow me around wherever I would like to go. Now I'm just going to go back. No, that's that, right? There we are. All right, so here we are. Now, if you push this ellipse, you will get all sorts of information. Now, if you're on your browser, which is really fun, I'm not sure it would happen here, but if you, if you, when we start to listen to this, on the right-hand side will be a list of all the other performances of that piece. Now, that becomes quite traumatic when you're listening to the first movement of Beethoven's Third Symphony, but maybe there aren't so many versions of Och Nash, uh, but it doesn't matter. So this is how long? Oh, it's, minutes, it's four, so. it's four, hour, four minutes and 47 seconds. Maybe we won't get all the way there. I hate to do that, but, but let's, have, let's have a listen. This, this will be beautiful. That's just really gorgeous. That's just wonderful. Oh my goodness. Our bedrooms um, yeah. context. That was each of us separately um, under sort of pillows and blankets and towels um, into a little microphone, then sent off to someone clever who put them together. So it's a slightly unusual way. Of yeah. Wow. Is there a place? Is there a favorite place you like to you like to record? Whoa. Anywhere but our bedrooms, I think now. <laughs> I mean, you are you all? Are you all? I'm trying to go back to you. I'm going back here, back to discover. Yeah, this thing is not loading. All right, let's get out of here. Here we are. Um, I mean, and, and also, I mean, so we know you guys from from all sorts of repertoire, but but you really do all sorts of repertoire. I I have a feeling it's just me. 
but when I think of the King Singers, I think of music like this. I think of really wonderful harmony, I have, I have classical stuff. And I know you have some fun pieces, but you really go really right into the jazz idiom as well, don't you? Mm -hmm. We should probably drop the needle on that in a minute. But is and, and do you do you have to keep those kinds of programs separate from one another, or is it a, a bouquet every night? It's sort of drop the needle, do it, go. I think deliberately, yeah. Uh, I think. Um, what we try to have as a like a unique a USP for want of a better term is that you come to a King Singers concert and you hear a, a mix of repertoire that you won't hear anywhere else. It's all about the kind of the variety of music that exists that we want to celebrate. Um, and why shouldn't we um, find interesting ways of juxtaposing music from very very different time periods in different countries in the same concert? So it's about doing that not just uh, sensitively, but also in a way that's really going to provoke your thinking. Um, like, for example, I think part of our philosophy is that the musical craft of John Lennon and Paul McCartney or George Gershwin or Cole Porter is just as worthy of adulation and respect as, um, as Tchaikovsky or, or Bird. Bird, you know, so we put them together to make people think. There's just, the times are different, the context is different, the quality of music being written is high and and it is just the same and you know it's just beautiful words beautiful music masterfully crafted and very often one thing can bring out a quality in the other that you didn't expect this is a wonderful point i think that i think i think our publics really go with that they they get exactly it was like oh my goodness and especially if the if the if the perhaps the heartbeat of the piece is similar but in completely different vernaculars you know? Yeah. If we if, if we went back to the Adagio um, site, is there is there something that jumps in your mind as really out there that probably people might be surprised that you actually ever did? Ooh. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to screen sharing here. To whoops, I messed that up. No, I didn't. Uh, is there something? Is there a cut in here somewhere? As I'm rolling here, the Great American Songbook, of course, a lot of fun. But that's if you, huh? if you head up to Finding Harmony up at the top there. Um, there's a track in there called Praying by, uh, by the American artist Kesha, um, which I think sits neatly underneath some William Bird. <laughs> is yeah. it, am I looking at it here? Which one? The C shack? It's called Praying. Where so it? it's Where just go down a few more uh, and just up a little bit, up about it two says, or three. Yeah, there we that, go. There we go. No. So here's down. a lovely piece of William Bird written during the Catholic recusancy. And after this, a song called Praying, which was um, a strong response to this the, one. Uh, the Time's Up hashtag Me Too movement. Shall we have a listen just quick? Yeah, let's do it. Here we go. That's beautiful. That's wonderful. 
That's great. Now, when you guys perform, you do you have microphones? No. Nope. Are you acu- you're acoustical, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Fantastic. What I love in your recordings is hearing the breaths. Yeah. Is that in, is that intentional? Or is it just because somebody's is that the, is that the lead? I mean, is, is somebody's taking the lead? Do you do you do you have different people leading? Or is one song this is my song and your song? It's sort of precisely. Yeah, we we try to um, be one unit rather than six of us. So we what, um, oh, yeah. we really kind of work extremely hard into minute detail of pronunciation, um, breathing um vowels vowels um and you know everything color in the tone and everything to make sure that we are just all working in the same direction and the breath is actually something that helps us when when you don't have a conductor <laughs> in time um so we use the breath to, to 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 sort of set maybe even set the sort of tone of the piece before it's even we've even started singing notes and it helps us come in together mm. um and it's amazing it's really incredible when it when it all when we're all doing exactly the same thing, it's such an awesome feeling. And you're able to do this amongst yourselves or do you have somebody that works with you? No, we no. just do it all amongst ourselves. And um, it's the most amazing moment is when it doesn't feel like any one of us has led the start yeah. of a piece. It just sort of happens and we don't really know mm. how or, or, you know, it's sort of, you don't try and think about it too much and, and you sort of end up sort of mm. riding along this way, which you're sort of leading, but also following on. Yeah. It's bizarre. Everyone is a leader and everyone is a kind of follower at the same time in a kind of very strange way. But I think probably because we are, we all work together so much because we, you know, this is more than a full-time job as we discussed earlier. Um, I think we manage to get to know each other really, really well and be totally comfortable with each other and support each other in what we're doing. And, and I think that, filters down to the things like the breathing it means we kind of can feel that um, language between us without anyone telling us or beating for us you know right but tell me about um sir david wilcox he was he was a big big influence it wasn't it sir david wilcox yeah. yes so, yes i mean and and i mean he was i mean in your, in your bio the high lows vocal jazz group the comedian harmonists the master singers but there's a particular landing place with david wilcox what does that mean what did that mean to the group well the original six king singers um met when they were friends studying at king's college in cambridge and they all sat in the choir there which is a, a famous choir and they sing basically every single day of of the academic year and they do the daily services in the beautiful chapel at king's and uh so david wilcox was the director of music there when they were all studying so they sort of learnt their choral craft during those three or four years singing together in that choir. And so I think when they started then doing concerts as a six, after they graduated, just to sort of earn some pocket money as friends, the musical imprint they had was that sound they had learnt at King's, which is, it's a beautiful space to sing. It's got great reverberance, a a long echo. Um, uh, But I think there's a something in the quality of what David Wilcox did with the King's choir that stayed somehow in the blood of the King Singers. And the prioritization of that blend, uniformity, um, the matching and the sort of precision elements of what we do, I think does trace back to those priorities which David Wilcox had for his choir of men and boys, which is about 30 people in total. It's a, it's a little bit like the string sound of the Israel Philharmonic or the Vienna Philharmonic or, or, or the brass sound of the Chicago. I mean, there's just that there's that 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 essence to it, I suppose. Do you go back? Do you guys go back and listen to your recordings? I mean, a things lot. that have been done, or or from your predecessors. Yeah, yeah. When when you first joined the group, you were, as well as being uh, given a well back in the time before iPads, uh, we I remember distinctly getting massive piles of music, and I remember <laughs> having to having to tour America for three weeks, and at least. At least twenty percent of your hat, like luggage allowance was was taken up with uh, music, and so uh, there wasn't much room for anything else. Um, but um, but yeah, and 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 the 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 process of listening to lots of other recordings, you know, from from previous um, lineups, if you like, um, I think is really informative because it gives you a great sense of where the groups come from, and. It's right. certainly, I feel, I feel like I could make an informed decision about whether or not I liked the way in which they did it or whether I'd want to actively choose to go in a slightly different mm. sort of 
mm. direction. But I think for me, that context was really helpful. And it's interesting how different lineups um, in a subtle way were quite distinct, um, even if people think that they all sound the same. Um, once you're ingrained in that sound mm -hmm. and embedded in it, I think actually there is a just like a, a distinction between the the different lineups and i think what's interesting for me i'm the second longest uh, of the current lineup uh, in terms of having been in the group since 2012 and um even this this lineup for me has a different um signature if you like from the one i joined um and i find that really interesting and i think the context of listening is uh, is a really valuable one that's a wonderful description okay didn't quite get a complete answer to my previous question. <laughs> all, and, and the first of all, what's the average length of the membership, and 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 who decides that it's time to go? Well, okay. So I think the average King singer has been in the group for about twelve years. So we're all below the average tenure right now. Um, I think that's one of the reasons that the group has been so successful is because they've been able to really bed in each lineup because there hasn't been too much change. So there have only been 28 uh, since 1968, which I think is a key part of, I think, why the group has yeah, got this consistency. Individuals decide when it's time to go. Um, there hasn't been, I think the longest serving King singers ever were in for 27 years and then 26 years. Two of the originals were in for 26, 20 or 25 years before they mm -hmm. retired. I should remember that. Um, and they they were a lot older than we are now when they decided to call it quits. Um, but I, it's it's a partnership and no one's a boss. And so no one can fire you. And uh, and I think it's that's one of the reasons, yeah, that, you know, it, it swings and roundabouts. On, on one hand, you might say we want a, a slightly younger voice, perhaps, or someone who's a bit more versatile, but you have so much experience when you, been in the group for so long you're in a tremendous asset in a different way so um people people have tended to leave um you know you know on the average after 12 years of being in the group but um for some people it's been as short as five to seven years but for many when when i joined the group i replaced a man who had been in the group for 23 years and he joined straight i don't think he even finished at the guild hall in london he was 21 when he started uh, and so wow. uh, <clears throat> So much knowledge from touring, from from doing this. Um, I, there was a third are part. you all? Are you? Has have is the membership of the King Singers always Anglo? Or is it? And is it, and is it also somehow always inextricably connected to to uh, King's College? Um, the well, to answer both parts, um, not everyone has been uh, has has been studying at King's College. In the current lineup, Pat um, studied there, and Eddie sang there for eddie was it one year or yeah yep yeah um but, but you were studying at a different college in cambridge yeah. yeah yeah and then when i left i was there for a year yeah and so i'm the first um uh if you like uh outsider uh to have joined the group i i my mother was from england but uh, my father was from new zealand so i was born in new zealand and i moved over to england when i was about uh 27 or so um and uh because i always wanted to be a professional singer and this was a, a chance to come over and give it a crack and actually slight right. fanboy moment um i i spent a lot of my university years um when i was training to be a, a, a baritone of some description listening to all your records and so this is a, this is a slight weird moment for me kind of getting to meet you uh and uh and i've got yeah this is this is I'm, I'm trying to keep i'm trying to keep it cool but um <laughs> but uh but this is this is pretty pretty special for me um because i i yeah you're, I, you're incredible you're incredibly I, kind you're incredibly kind isn't it nice to mic records you can just sort of say they're done and and you know yeah do it like that do it like that you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh that's very you guys are, you guys are great you're gonna have a wonderful concert i, I look forward to it uh Im immensely uh, it, it's wonderful to get to know you. I'm sure that our audience uh, and we'll get some we'll get some email and feedback. It's been fun to sort of get behind the group and, and see what's going on. Please don't miss. Go to idajo.com and there's just a wonderful uh, a list and offering on the Global Concert Hall. Idajo started out as a as a streaming platform, classical music made for classic. Well, for the user interface, user interface for classical music, how it's structured by classical musicians, programmers that have trained in classical music, so you can trust 
that the Allegro is in the right place, and the Moderato is in the right place, and the Recitative comes in the right place. That's one simple fact, but it's just this wonderful globalization, if you will, of, of classical music on the Adagio platform. Then with the COVID crisis, we started with the Adagio Live because it was just the conviction of the founders of the company and a few of us who had joined early in their, in their mission that putting personalities, faces, voices, conversations like this for our interested, devoted, classic public or public of classical music was just too important not to go. And we had to jump that up a little bit because of the crisis came sooner than we had planned to start this out. And the idea is to have master classes and interviews and, and, and lectures and all that. And we'll get to the learning platform more and more as we move on. And of course, in June, with just this great question, how can we how can we make concert life still available to people? And we all knew that we were coming into what I call the third rail of performance analog and digital, who's going to be the first to create a platform that this can happen successfully. And, and, and Adagio took that challenge on, and now we have the Global Concert Hall. It is a, a paywall, which is not about a whole bunch of money, but it's also good for the public to be able to participate in a living, supporting way to, to pay for the concert, and people want to do that. It's not horribly expensive. And, and all of the concerts are being produced Analog, there may be some people there in some concerts, uh, 50, 200 maybe, or there'll be nobody in a studio. It is usually live. It lives for 24 hours online and then it goes away. It's not a library of performances. It's not YouTube. It's not iMedici. It's literally a performance platform. And the, this, the, the, the proceeds that go are split very generously to the performers. 70% and 30% to the to the company. And I think that's important that people know that. If you buy a ticket, you are supporting the people that are producing their concert for you. And I think that's an incredibly important part of the global concert hall that people know that, that and that's the whole philosophy behind idodger.com is to get artists and public closer together and let them find their music. So if you're a big fan of the King's Singers, go to idodger.com, look through all of these wonderful recordings that they've made and are making, and probably are even going to offer some exclusive cuts down the road. Uh, it's quite wonderful. You guys are just wonderful. You're young men, you're in the throes of it. You're, I, I imagine that this group is gonna stay like this for a good 10 years. And I promise I will come by in person. I would. I just can't hardly wait to do that. It's got to happen. Sam, Thank we'll, you for joining. We'll, Good luck we'll on the concert. Anything else you. you want to tell your public? How's that? We'll sing, we'll sing a song with you when you come and join us in concert. All right. Oh man, wouldn't that? Wouldn't that? That would just you know. Do yeah. you guys like folk songs? Yeah, I've been on a complete yes. folk song thing lately. And especially classical classical composers that like the Von Williams folk songs. I mean, hello. Yeah. But yeah. I did a concert this summer with a with a with a folk song, a folk uh, the Mühlstadt men's chorus in in Austria, and we sang Kantner Volkslieder in in dialect. It was so beautiful. But there's so much in America. There's so much in in Austria. Maybe that'd be fun. We should do that sometime. Wouldn't that be fun? Yes, anyway, You're it's a nice so offer. Fun. I jumped on it. Great. <laughs> Stay healthy, guys. Stay healthy. Uh, Travel safe. Be See speed. you soon. Thank you so much, right, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining us. I dodge you live for classical music.